Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and I've been following the updates on the NS Panel Pro, the firmware updates, uh, but I um, missed it for the last six months so I thought I'm just going to summarize everything that uh, has happened and actually there's quite a few of these so I've even printed a guide for myself so I can um, know what I need to talk about and the last video was uh, I think last December on version 1.5 and now we are at version uh, uh, 1.11 so there is a lot to talk about and for the most things I'm just going to fly through and I'm going to show you the things that I can show you during the application or on the device itself so let's get started with it so the first thing that we usually get in these updates is support for new devices so I'm just going to uh, mention a couple of these that they, um, the NS Panel Pro now supports so you can control it from this screen so these are the SPM relays the RF bridge, the iFans, these new Zigbee temperature and humidity sensors and the buttons and also the TX uh, Ultimate now can be controlled here including the scenes and everything. And uh, since we are talking about some of the new devices I also want to show that while well, obviously the uh, new Zigbee devices that has been released are also now supported. Next, uh, on the settings page, um, Sonoff has, or IT has included a feedback section, although I'm not really sure how many of you would like to use this screen to type a long feedback, but uh, nevertheless, it is available. For the next feature, I have to go into the EVLink app because when you open up your NS Panel Pro and you go into settings, now you can see that uh, there is this EVLink remote sub devices. And that's the same function that I think we have seen for the R5, sorry, M5 switch, uh, where it can use the built in. I presume it's the Bluetooth inside the ESP32 and then you can connect to other sub devices like uh, battery power switches or the SMIT. So now it is available on the NS Panel Pro as well. Also back in the application where you define various thermostats. So for each of the thermostats you can define an action device and now the list of these action device has been um, um, enhanced as well. So for example S31, POWR3, POW Elite, POW Origin, TH Elite, TH Origin, S40 TPA and S40 TPB. So again as you can see even uh, well, based on the list of devices I have I can pretty much use all of them for execution device. And since we are talking about thermostats there is a new function in the scene as well so now you can create a scene let's say add to perform and then you can select the ns panel pro as a smart device so which i just need to find yeah here and um, the options here has been enhanced so now you can control the security mode so you can set a specific uh, away mode or sorry the arm mode or you can disarm it you can use the beeps but i think we have seen this before so you can make it as a beep so again let's say you have a whatever sort of device that uses a button and then if you have uh, ns panel pros around the house now you can use it as a chime so you can set up a scene that if your front doorbell is pressed then your all your ns panels uh, you know play a whatever doorbell sound so I think this is a quite nice functionality or maybe you can just use an internal button to just to sound an alarm in every see every part of your room sort of as an intercom that oh you know dinner is ready something like that <clears throat> and you can also um, use the uh, screen status which I find uh, quite useful because one of the other feature I'm going to talk about is you can set this screen up so it's always on but then you can use this screen status to either sleep it or wake it up. So let's say you want to have this screen always on, but the ones that you have in the bathroom should go off when you go to bed. So you can use a scene and then set the screen to sleep. And then finally, the one reason I came here is the thermostat settings. So as you can see now, um, I think the most useful functions here are going to be this auto manual. So you can select the thermostat and you can uh, set the thermostat to be in auto or manual mode. So again, if I come back to the screen is these uh, buttons, so auto or manual. So maybe use the auto mode to set up uh, um, various temperatures. So it's like, you know, a colder during uh, the evening and or sorry overnight and uh, it gets um, warmer in the morning and in, in in the evening when you stay at home but maybe you want to have uh, you want to use a manual mode some sort of like boost mode so you can just uh, have a button maybe when you 
um, or maybe you can have a tap to home uh, automation or scene so let's say you come home from a vacation and uh, the temperature was low then you can set it to sort of manual to heat sorry se yeah set it to manual to heat up your home uh, according to the manual setting which could be let's say a higher uh, temperature and then after that you can go back to auto mode so something like that i think it's uh, it's a useful feature and you know more options is, is definitely better the next new feature is related to language support. So a um, couple of new languages have been added in various supports. Um, I think in the last couple of updates we have received 11 new languages. So now the NS Panel Pro supports uh, 32 different languages. Also in terms of customizability, we have um, seen the main clock here and now we have a settings uh, in, the, say in the options and in the display. We have a settings for uh, 24, not the display, but uh, the time zone settings we have an option for a 24 hour clock or a 12 hour clock so you can set it uh, if you you know if you live in the US and you prefer the 20 uh, to, sorry the 12 hour clock format something that I won't be able to show you here but uh, the in NS Panel Pro now uses the same EV Link Cube um, environment which is used by the iHost so all the things that I can do in the iHost for example in node red flow control I can use on the NS panel uh, pro as well also since we are talking about integration if you are using the homebridge app now via the homebridge app you will be able to control uh, the Zigbee sub devices that are linked to the NS panel pro from your Apple home kit as well one thing that I already mentioned a couple of uh, uh, minutes ago is that in the screen settings or the display settings now you can set this auto clock to never so this is your always on screen if you want to use the S NS Panel Pro that way. Additional feature on the UI as well is you can see that there, are, there is an additional temperature and humidity settings here and if you go into your NS Panel Pro settings and up here and uh, temperature and humidity feeds now you can select a for example a Zigbee sensor or a T as you can see in my case THL8 and TH10 to show you the temperature or the humidity uh, on the main screen so it comes up as like sort of like a new widget on your screen so I think that's quite useful you can place a sensor outside and you will always see the real temperature outside as opposed to the sort of the internet projected temperature Going back to the NS Panel Pro settings, so in the screen settings, when you are deleting the, editing the screens, you can set a passcode for a specific screen. So for example, I have enabled a passcode. So now if I, well, when I wanted to, um, when I was using a sensor, then it was asking me to put in a passcode. So, um, <clears throat> so for example, if I want to operate this 4 Channel Pro, well, I can do it now because it remembered my password, but initially it asked me for a password uh, to use this de use this device. And then you can set it per screen. So you might want to allow the user to you know, control devices, but maybe you want to have a passcode in order to control the thermostats, for example, because you can set this passcode uh, for each of the screen. And then the screen will still come up, but as soon as you try to do something on that screen, you can, uh, well, the passcode is going to come up and um, then you have to enter a passcode. So it's simple as that. But I think it's an interesting feature, again, in, let's say, shared accommodation or in rentals. Also, in terms of shared accommodation or rentals, there is this guest mode functionality. And if I turn it on, what you would notice that if I bring down the settings, then most of the screen elements are turned off. So add the theme, the ad cam and the alarm is turned off. We only have the notice available where you can see like logs and then within the settings, the wireless network. Um, I think again, rental accommodation, shared rooms, it's a useful feature. I don't really agree with why these buttons got uh, disabled. I think in setting, I would disable the settings, but maybe enable the alarms. I have to apologize, but I think we will get some a little bit of noise outside. But if I go back to the settings and if I go into weather, I can control the temperature unit. So now this setting is going to synchronize across not only the temperature here, uh, but also we're going to control all the other temperatures that are displayed on the unit, which uh, again is nice. 
if you are using the web pages a lot, then there has been a, well, sorry, not this one. Yeah, so there has been a small change here. It's they made this top um, sort of like title bar sh shorter. So, um, I mean, I used to watch like, you know, Sky News or some o uh, online news here. Um, in that one, I have like back bars on the top and the bottom as well, so it doesn't really concern me. But again, if you're using a full uh, page, like browser page, then having more screen space is going to be, you know, beneficial. We have also received some updated weather icons. So apparently, I mean, I don't remember the old icons, but uh, there are some new graphics which we can see here. I mean, yeah, it's sunny all day, so you don't see a lot of variety, but of course they got updated. If you are looking at the camera feeds, uh, we have now audio on the RTSP streams as well. So if I look at my camera, then it's not only shows. <laughs> okay. So the gardeners are here. So that's what you can hear. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's definitely working. Both the audio and the video is coming through. Um, you might have noticed this call button here. So now if you are using the cast uh, functionality with the app as well, now you can call cast apps. So let's say you have an NS Panel Pro in one room, but let's say in your main living room, you have an, like an iPad, which is running the call, uh, cast app. And now you can call this uh, tablet. So you can see the tablet appearing here. I didn't give it a different name, but you can just name various tablets. So you can like have a mix of iPads, tablets running the cast app and NS Panel Pros in various places around the house. And you can just call them like as an intercom. And going back to the main settings uh, into the EV-Link application, we have a new option here, which is called the pilot feature. And you, there is one option here, which is called the turbo mode. And you can e boost the uh, Zigbee coordinator or the Zigbee signal inside the NS Panel Pro. And it is an experimental feature. It's not guaranteed to have a, well, um, an, a good impact or a meaningful impact in every time, but you might just be luck, uh, unlucky that you have a sensor which is just outside the range. And the turbo mode could be the one which is going to save you and make sure that device is connected to the Zigbee network as well. So these are all the updates on the NS Panel Pro from version 1.5 to the current version 1.11. If you want this device, I'm going to leave affiliated links in the video description. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.